Hello and welcome to 101 on Plus TV Africa. We are 101 with the CEO of Comic Republic, G.D. Martin. Comic Republic is a comic book startup that is shaping the reputation narrative of Africa using quality art and stories in the form of comic books. Thank you for your time, Mr. Martin. Thank you for having me. Okay, so you describe yourself as a geek. Yes. In your own words, you say, I've always been a geek. Yes. Um, what does that mean? What, <laughs> are you obsessed with detail? No, well, being a geek is where those guys that we we watched all the animations that were on TV then, mm -hmm. we could tell you the names of every character, and then immediately after that, we'll go and pick up a comic book, and then immediately after that, either it was our Nintendo or PSP or, you know, PlayStation, that was just basically what we spent our time doing. And then when people were, you know, having fun outside, we were always inside, just really just reading up on something mm. about science and space. So, you know, we just love the geeky, techy things. And that's why I call myself a geek. I'm just, you give me a new device, I'm excited. You show me a new sci-fi movie, I'm excited. Mm -hmm. You know, show me a new character, I'm like, oh, I'm breaking the character down. I'm giving you the name Star Wars, Star Trek, all those things. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay, so, but for geeks, um, the general perspective most people have is that they are intelligent, yes, they are intellectuals, but they are unfashionable and they are boring. Now, okay, that's where they go think wrong. I don't think you're, you're you unfashionable, I'm not right? intelligent. <laughs> Okay. Okay. And I literally always tell people I have no idea what I'm doing. Mm. Uh, yeah, and uh, they don't believe you me. Just I don't know why. And then it yes, big, I just right? do stuff, and mm -hmm. I don't know how it happens. Mm -hmm. Mistakes, you okay. know. Okay. And okay, well, fashionable. Well, okay, I do like my fashion, to be honest. Well, you're supposed to be unfashionable. I don't know how that happened. It okay. was Another mistake. See, I told you I didn't know what I'm doing. Uh -huh. so. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's talk about the inspiration behind um, Comic Republic. When you're explaining it, it's very simple. You would say you saw that there were not um, black comic heroes and you said to step into that space. Is mm. it that simple? No, it's not that simple. I, I actually have real life experiences that led me to that. You know, Growing up, I was actually one of those kids. I wasn't really big on religion. Mm -hmm. You know, mommy was always like, let's go to church. Church was boring. Right? Of course, as a teenager and as a young child growing up, mommy and daddy were the most annoying people because mm -hmm. they always tried to make me do what I didn't want to do. So I wasn't big on listening to my parents also, and that was just the truth, mm -hmm. right? But somehow, I wanted to be like my superheroes. And the one thing that the superheroes had was that they always wanted to do the right thing, right? So I found out that no matter how strong Superman was, right, he was still humble enough to not abuse his power. And no matter how weak Batman was as a human being, he still had the discipline to put himself at risk above his own interest and protect people. You know, everything was about people, even if it was at personal risk. And I somehow just fell in love with that. And every time I needed to make a decision, right, as simple as stealing, and I'll be like, because I need to be like Batman and I will do the right thing no matter what, I just wouldn't. I'm a good guy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I felt that really guided me into being a good person. Right. And then um, whenever I went back to school and I was talking to people, don't do this. Don't you want to be like Batman? You would hear well, Batman is a white guy. Right. Superman is for those people. You know, it's not we are Africans. And it dawned on me at that point in time that the problem was that we didn't have people who looked like us that were icons. And, you know, we, I needed to, for, I just had this interest, okay, I was going to start drawing black superheroes as a child. I got into a lot of trouble because my mom was always like, read your book instead of, you know, drawing. But over time, you know, I grew up with that interest. And at a point in time, I started noticing that the whole world went superhero crazy. Look at the movies that are blockbusters. Look mm -hmm. at the most popular trending things. Is that you say Avengers and everybody knows what you're talking about. You say Superman, Batman, everybody knows what you're talking about. And I thought, yeah, this is the time for us to push African icons as superheroes. We're going to go back to the comic and African icons, but you mentioned religion. And it's interesting for you to say you're not such a big person of religion because some of your stories or some of the stories we've seen come out of Comic Republic like Iweti and Avonome, right? They're based on tradition and religion. Has there been any form oh, of yes, backlash? You know, so what I was saying was then was that when I was small, when I was younger, mm -hmm. right, I didn't think religion wasn't that important to me. I didn't see the relevance of religion. Of course, right now, Right, I do see the relevance of I'm I'm oh. I'm big on religion. What changed? I think I started having sense. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Okay. You know, yeah. Uh, and, you, you know, you, there are some things that happen to you as you go along, you know. And I practice a couple, you know, one or two religious things that mm. I believe and I have faith in and I've seen them work. You know, so now I really believe in religion. No matter, there are some certain principles, right, that are based on belief, right? It's safe to say you now have your personal um, experience with yes. Yes. God. Yes. I'm trying to not to call the, yeah. <laughs> you know, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. and so. A lot of our characters are really based, like you said, a lot of various tradition. religious and traditional mm -hmm. religion. And, you know, I try in Comic Republic to feed everyone because no matter your religion, tribe, we're still one people. And as one people, we need to get better for the environment to change. So that's supposed to be a deliberate move? Yes, it is. And telling the African story? Yes, it is. Okay, so let's talk about the process of putting up a team for Comic Republic. How easy was that? It, it, to be honest, it was one of the things that gave me the light that I knew, okay, yes, the divine powers are behind you on this one, mm. right? And you should go forward. It was I was ready to do it, right? And I started speaking to my friends. I was like, I want to start a comic book company. And I wanted it to be a company because I'd done various businesses that were successful. So I knew, you know, that it wasn't something I would do on my own and I, I needed a team, right? And then it wasn't up to two weeks where I was like, oh, you know what, I'm going to start looking for people. And I spoke to a friend. I was like, oh, I know three kids that want to do comics. One of them is a writer, one of them is a colorist, and one of them is an artist. That's all you need. And he introduced me to those guys. And mm -hmm. those guys are still my partners till today. Right, and that was it. And immediately we started working on our first comic book. So the first set of people, it was easy, but going forward, because we're in an environment that did not recognize the format of the platform, and hence there's been no formal training in that line. Yeah, that was the hard part. Now bringing people to standard of what the the platform should be like. Mm. So from what you're saying, the passion was there. The Talent was also available, but how was it easy to groom the business side of um, no, comic book? It comic? was very hard, very hard for many, many um, sides. You know, first things first is infrastructure, of course. Um, the nature of what we do is that you draw on paper, and that was then we've improved or we've gone beyond that. You draw on paper, you have to scan it, and then you have to color it on the system, right? It's pretty hard for you, number one, to get a scanner that is good enough then in Nigeria. Second thing is to have enough light for you to be able to do all the digital work that needed to be done in record time. Because out of 24 hours, we barely had our light for six hours, of which most of it would be when you're supposed to be sleeping, mm -hmm. right? So it was hard to keep up with that. Um, and then there, there was this whole... Uh, thing about people not taking you seriously you tell them that you you do comics and there's this great disdain that people would look at you and would be very demoralizing and you know when you're not when you don't appreciate what you do as a person and people around you don't even appreciate what you do the morals go and do the same thing every day drops so there was also that you know convincing the society that what we we're doing was important mm -hmm. and was a profession and then of course training people because the infrastructure and the institutions to train artists were not around in the uh, field of um, comic art. So there was also that hard process where we had to self-train the people that were coming in. Yeah, so how would you describe the industry now? Is it getting better compared to... Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Fortunately, you know, I think it's one of... I would say one of the gifts that Comic Republic has given the Nigerian environment and Africa as a whole we now have more people that are taking the medium seriously. We now have people that are coming from outside the country exploiting our talent. Um, I won't say exploiting, I mean using people from Nigeria to do a lot of their work. I've seen major global companies that have hired people from Nigeria and it all started with us, right? Mm -hmm. Because we showed the world that we could make it a business. So even in Nigeria, right now in my studios, we don't use pencil and paper anymore. Everything is digital, right? We have clients like you know from other countries that use us for their services. And there have been one or two other studios that are coming up because it is now a business, right? And so, yeah, it, the, the environment has completely changed. And I would beat my chest to say solely because of Comic Republic, 
but it is the legacy that we have left and it's only going to go higher because the world is now digital crazy the world is now art crazy and even superheroes as a medium is now a popular thing it's no more for geeks it's now trending if you don't know avengers these days or black panther there's something wrong with you mm. all right That's okay the truth. <laughs> we'll carry on that conversation but let's go on a very quick break and when we come back we still have gd martin with us Welcome back. This is still one-on-one on Plus TV Africa. Before we went on that break, you were talking about how the market has evolved. And I would want you to touch on the process of going digital because you mentioned earlier that there was a time where people were joining and then you scanned, you had to deal with power, and now everything in your um, organization is digital. What do they have to do to remain relevant? Because mm. it seems you wake up today and there's something new going on. Once it is digital, there is something new coming up. Okay, so the first thing to remain relevant in this field, the creative field, is you first need to look at your, whatever it is that you're doing, you need to somehow, and it's a bit weird, distance yourself from your passion a bit and look at it as a product, right? And so if, it's, if it becomes a product, then you know that you're giving a service to people, mm -hmm. right? And you need to constantly figure out what do people want. It's like having a user interface. You constantly improve your user interface based on feedback from the users. Okay. And that's what you do when you're, when you're creating content. What's trendy? What, are, what people would like to see these days, you know? What's the style out there right now, you know? What's visually appealing today? If you notice today now, movies and stuff like that have a little more, that the tones are darker, right, these days than before where everything was bright and loud. Things like that, you know, you, you now really have to identify with the youth. You know, you need to go and find out what kind of music are they listening to? What kind of, how do they dress these days? Do you understand? Um, how are um, social media platforms like Instagram and YouTube and Netflix, how are they integrating their products and their content? Because all these things actually feed content to people. How are they giving that content back to you? You need to put that into your creativity and your delivery process. Mm, talking about creativity and um, relating with the layman, what would you say is the difference? I mean, if you explain to someone who doesn't understand it, what's the difference between comic and animation? Okay, so comic is still art. Right? It's telling the story by, with a series of still art. You know, animation is very, very dynamic and fluid. Right? So animations are things that actually are alive and um, are in a constant motion. Still art are frames. It's almost like you capture frames of people's lives or experiences and you put them you know, on any surface, either a physical surface or a digital surface for people to, to capture moments of an event as they go along. But with animation, animation, sorry, you're actually watching it, it's fluid. Mm -hmm. So it's safe to say animation is um, bringing life to a comic character. Yes, it right? is. Right? Okay, so um, let's look at the Batman and the Superman and the Avengers, like you uh, rightly mentioned. Do you think African superheroes will get to the point where they are that big and people can actually relate um, to them to say, like your upbringing, you said it helps you shape your mentality and the way you do things. Do you think we'll get to that point where our superhero can do that? Oh yes, it, it's, it's inevitable, right? Even here right now in Nigeria, if you, if you ask them about Comic Republic, that's the comic audience, people who are into books, a lot of them have stopped drawing things like Superman. You know, you see on social media, there are a lot of our characters that people are like, oh, I want to be like this person, this icon. I have a grown-up man that says his favorite character is Iriti. Iriti is a young girl, right? Simply because he likes the fact that she's African and she fights for people in Ibadan, mm -hmm. right? So we're going there. And even we, as Comic Republic, we've been getting a lot of proposals from um, studios in America, studios in Europe, Europe saying that they want to use our characters to tell the story of diversity. It is completely inevitable. If we don't do it, somebody else is going to do it. And even Black Panther, for example, is a good testament of the ability for black heroes to take center on the mm. world stage. Okay, talking about the world stage and um, the effect of the superheroes on humans, we cannot isolate our industry from that in Hollywood. Now, you see them trying to tell a story because this art is a form of character building, right? And it's trying to infuse homosexuality and so many other things that you would say is not favorable to our kind of tradition and culture over here into comic. And comic 
was seen as something that's supposed to be safe for even children. What is that going to do to that space? Okay, so to be honest, um, these days you really need to look at the community that you're feeding, right? And you must understand that you cannot attend to everybody, right? Also, you must understand that in today's world where people have their rights to do what they feel like doing and what makes them happy, mm -hmm. right? It becomes increasingly impossible to satisfy everyone. Mm -hmm. And so in this field, right, for example, Comic Republic, we pick the type of audience that we want to feed our content to. We don't say any other one is bad, but we say because of our own personal beliefs and motives, these are the type of things that we want. And so based on our own moral standards, and I say our moral standards, we create content that will fit you know, the people that we think would appreciate our standards of moral. And so, for example, we are not, um, although we have nothing against it, but we try to keep it clean and remove sexuality as a whole. It's not even about being homosexual or about being straight. We think sexuality should be private, right? And so we make it clean where um, if you don't want to learn anything about, um, you know, what it is like or what sexuality is about, you can read it. Mm -hmm. It's family friendly. And we try to keep it neutral so that no matter your belief, religion or whatever, you can pick up a Comic Republic book and you'll still be happy to read it. Are there plans to turn the Comic um, Republic books to live actions? Oh, definitely. We're mm -hmm. presently working on our animated shorts. Okay. And we're also talking to a number of studios to make, into making them movies. Mm -hmm. And we've gone... F um, quite ahead in our plans and discussions with the studio. So how soon are we going to get this? I can say between 12 and 24 months max. Okay. Yeah, we should be able to get either a live studio movie that's with action, real life people, or an animated, full length animated movie. Mm, all right, let's talk about your relationship or partnership with DW to produce African Roads. How has that been and how important would you rate that partnership? All right, for me, it's been an exciting journey and one that I'm really proud of. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm grateful to God every day that we're in it. Because as it is, we don't have, like other countries, our history documented mm -hmm. in visual arts. There are loads of literary works on these things. There are loads of people who have written stuff about African history, but none of them have gone ahead to put or compile visual images that will show you know the people who made africa to what it is today the people who have shaped our continent the people who did great things people who did bad things and so that people from years to come will be able to pick these things up and watch it the internet doesn't lie and right now we have we are, we are creating kind of like a storehouse of african history on a platform that years to come people can refer to it um, and say this is who we are this is what we did, this is what we shouldn't do, and this is what we need to do to move ahead. Okay, I like that you mentioned um, great things and those who did bad things. Do you yes. think we have that right of expression to be as free as we want to express um, or to portray these superheroes or these heroes or whoever they are the way they really are supposed to be? Oh, yeah, I mean, one of the fundamental rights for any human being is one, to know the truth and um, as any good person, you should be able to tell the truth, right? Mm -hmm. And I think based on that, we have the right to tell it as it is it, um, and let the audience judge, you know, if it is good or bad. Mm -hmm. I have my objective or subjective, sorry, views on what is good and what is bad. And I've made my decision based on what I've seen, based on my own personal yeah. views that this is bad and this is good. So we just put the content as it is and let people decide if it's good or bad. Mm. So there's an apparent um, lack of resources when it comes to the creative industry. I mean, even more so the, the part where you play. How do you bridge that gap to make sure you get the kind of funding? Because when we mention Avengers, we know how much it costs to create one of those um, feature films. And I don't think that kind of finances are available to us over here. How, how do you balance it? So one of the things I've always looked at and I've always tried to preach to the creative industry, right, and I'm happy that you've asked that question, is you need to create a product that people would want to invest in in the first place. I mean, I tell you as an individual, you wouldn't take your money to buy something that is of no value to you, right? We must understand that the industry is young and we must constantly strive to actually create a product that people will want to invest in. 
right? It's like somebody that, that says, look, I want to sell food products and you've not made it. You've not created a farm first. You've not planted. You've not done anything to show that you can actually farm, get food from your farm and sell it, right? And that's what we've been doing in Comic Republic. We've taken the pain to build a product that we can actually sell to an audience and people can invest in. And that's the only way to solve this thing. We should stop trying to do this pity party, saying the creative industry and people are not investing. You haven't given them anything to invest in at all. If you look at all the institutions and all the, um, um, let me put it, companies that are making money from whatever their products are, most of them are at least 10 years old, right? Comic Republic as a whole is about 78 years old, right? And it took us five to six years for us to create a product that people like DW would want to invest in us. And they are paying for their services right now. And we have clients all around the world that are paying for the services that we render simply because we have provided val value. And until creatives move to a point where they strive daily to provide value, they will constantly not have finance. Mm. So we need to do our own homework. We need to put our back into it. Make sure that we're meeting the investors, um, the customers at their point of need, provide value for them, and we will get finance. Yeah, I remember speaking with you at the social media week, and you mentioned that DW actually reached out for this project to be done. So at the initial um, conversation, what were you perceiving at that point in time? Uh, in the, okay, so by the time DW approached us, we had already started working with other. We had done something for BBC and Al Jazeera, right? So it wasn't new to us to work with foreign agencies, right? And what I really liked about DW was that they were open. They didn't have an agenda, right? And so we were like, okay, this will work. And we were a bit excited. At first, we felt, okay, we would have to censor some of the things that they wanted us to do, you know, because you feel wise. They, why is a foreign company wanting, I mean, they are not in Africa. Why do they want to come and tell African stories, right? So we felt we were going to, you know, at some point, I felt at a point I would say, no, I'm not going to do this because it's contrary to our beliefs. But actually, they were very transparent. They were very sincere and they were really willing for us to put our input. And, you know, they would ask us, does this match? Is this correct? Are we offending anybody? And we're like, no. So it was really exciting. Plus, you know, we build them accordingly and they, they did not argue. They wanted to pay what it was that we were asking for. You know, it, it was a pleasant experience. All right, let's go on the break. But when we come back, we'll definitely carry on the conversation. Welcome back. This is still one on one on Plus TV Africa. I still want to dwell on the partnership with DW because African Roots is, I think, very important at this point in time to tell our stories. However, you also said something during the press conference. You said that it was important for us to understand where we're coming from to be able to know where we're going to. Is this um, narration doing enough to let people understand that right now? Uh, it's not. Right, okay. but it's ongoing, which is a good thing. DW is committed to us creating the, a loads of the stories, and also in short, informative, um, and ed edutainment is that what they call it mm -hmm. these days? Right, mm -hmm. where you're having fun and you're getting educated. I think it is enough for people who seek this knowledge and simply who just love animation for them to be able to pick up the, you know, mistakes and the wisdoms of, uh, you know, our traditions, our past, our legacies, and be able to, you know, forge a better future. Because in any strategy that you're making, you need to be informed, you need to know what worked, what didn't work, and from there you can innovate and succeed. How has acceptance been so far? Oh, it's been really good. Um, we get about 100,000 views on our app monthly. And presently, as at last time we checked, um, African Roots was rated as the third most viewed um, comic or content. Thing, yeah, content on our app. And that basically translates to, it means we were getting about 40 to 60,000 people, you know, viewing it. So it's been very good. Again, you know, um, another reason why we're excited that we're doing the project. Mm, people who have followed your story would know that you're always talking on power of superheroes to shape the African narratives. Yes. Okay, I'd like to round up with that. What does that mean to you? And you started this conversation from 2016, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. And this is 2020. The gap, what do you think has happened from that point till now? 
Um, I'll just you know, quickly wrapping up. I'll tell you that, look, if you look at Superman, Captain America, Spider-Man's costume, all of them all wear the American flag and the American colors, right? Superman was created when um, the U.S. was in war. Batman was created in the point where they were in recession and they wanted people to feel, you know, a little bit more confident with themselves. That has shaped a whole nation to believe in their own country, right? And now I've, I've gotten a lot of um, young Nigerians. We've even gotten um, a picture from an orphanage where the kids were wearing costumes saying that they were ready, you know, to be better people. That proves to me, you know, um, and also from a lot of the fan mails that we are actually changing the narrative. But most importantly is the way we look to people outside people see our work and say is this nigeria is this from nigeria and nigerians really like this we didn't know that you know there are places like this in nigeria and we're able to work with people like dw bring them into the country to see the good side of us so i think we are achieving our goal mm. of changing the african narrative both inside and outside so what is the distribution channels for african roots for anyone who wants to watch or watch. follow so um DW.com is the first place. If you go to DW.com, you'll be able to see all season one. And I think we just launched season two there. And also on the Comic Republic platform, which is www.thecomicrepublic.com. All right. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. Thank you for watching. We've been chatting with GD Martin, who is the CEO of Comic Republic. You can catch this conversation all over again and all our exclusive content by subscribing to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. My name is Elsie Godwin. Do stay with us. Mm -hmm.